Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind the Country Chic Cottage. Today we're going to make sublimation pens. <laughs> so we are going to add sublimation print to the barrel of a pen. So it's a specialty pen that has a sublimation coating on a white barrel. You take the pens apart, you add your sublimation print, add some shrink wrap, and sublimate these in a sublimation oven, convection oven, air fryer, whatever you have. Now the process is pretty simple, but this is super, super small. So I did run into some difficulties. So if you wanna watch this video, see some of the things that I ran into so that you do it right the first time. Now, the prints that I'm going to use, I have three different like watercolor floral patterns and I am offering those up for free and I will link to those as well as everything I'm using in the description below this video. So if you're on computer, scroll down, click show more. If you're on mobile, swipe up on the video or click the arrow to expand the description. There you'll find a list of links, including the pen set that I'm using that comes with the shrink wrap, as well as the three watercolor floral patterns. So you can use those patterns to make these pens or you can use them to make a tumbler or whatever else you would like. Just enjoy the patterns and use them for your sublimation crafts. So now let's take a look at supplies we're gonna to use to make sublimation pens. So you're gonna need sublimation prints and this is sublimation ink printed on sublimation paper out of a sublimation printer, heat resistant gloves, a lint roller, your sublimation pens and they come in a kit. We're gonna look at this kit in just a second. Heat resistant tape, maybe some scissors, and you'll also need a heat source as well as a heat gun to shrink the shrink wrap. And I also recommend some kind of heat resistant mat. Your easy press mat would work. However, you are going to wanna put these on something because they will be very hot. I am gonna use my sublimation oven. I have a PYD Live sublimation oven, but any type of convection oven, even an air fryer would work. However, if you're going to use an oven for sublimation, you never want to use it for food again. So just a note of safety there. The pens I'm using came in a kit. So there were five pens. There's actually 10 shrink wraps that come with the kit. The pens come assembled and you will need to take them apart. So we're only gonna sublimate the white portion. They're not easy to take apart, I'll put it that way. So I just closed the pen completely because this part you twist to open the pen portion. So I closed it completely and then pulled on this bottom portion and it comes off. And then you just pull on the top portion and it comes off. I was kind of scared to put that much pressure on it, but that is the way they come apart. And then you'll have the barrel itself, which is white, that you can sublimate on. So let's take a look at the process for sublimating on these pieces. For my sublimation prints, I just printed like a full sheet of sublimation. So you could print these to size or just print a full sheet. After I printed my full sheet, I took, and I did these a few different ways. This first way is just with a paper cutter. And these are approximately, they're a little over four. So I made the length four and a quarter. So I had a little bit of overhang on both ends. And then I made the width for the specific pins I'm using one and three eighths inches. That will give me a little bit of overlap, but I am gonna show you how to work with that when you're wrapping these around. That will mean there'll be a seam down the pen because the pattern does not repeat. So I was thinking about ways to get around the seam and other things that might look really cool with these pens. So I took this one, I made it the right height so it's Again, four and a quarter. But then for the width, I ripped the edges. So I just literally ripped the paper. And so the paper doesn't exactly meet when wrapping around the pen. So I'll have a white area that's kind of jagged and I thought that might be a cool effect. Then I wanted a few customized options. So these are just with a sublimation print. If you wanna go customized, I do have some videos on using various free programs for printing sublimation prints. And in those, you could add text. So I just added my name. This one, I did the same as this version over here, where I just use a paper cutter to cut it to size. And I just made sure my name was approximately in the center. And I'll be able to wrap that around the barrel of this pen. This version, I tore the edges just like this, 
but I also tore the top and the bottom. Again, just to get an idea of what that will look like. And again, my name is in the center. Sublimation prints do need to be mirrored, so my name is mirrored on both of these. So this one is torn all the way around, four sides, so when I wrap it, you'll have white down the like seam area and white around the top and the bottom. All this to show you a few different options for your pens, and if you come up with another way to do it, you could definitely experiment on different ways. So now let's look at how to tape these to the barrels. So first we wanna clean these well. However, using a lint roller can get a little tricky with these. So I just like to tear off a sheet and just kind of wrap it around the barrel. And there we have it. So that is clean and I can use that same piece over again. Now I wanna wrap this print around this barrel. Sometimes when you do prints like this, the seam can kind of overlap and bleed through. One trick, so I'm turning my sublimation print over to the back, and I'm going to run heat resistant tape all the way down the edge of the sublimation print. So that's on the back. And then when I wrap this around, I'm gonna make sure the ends are covered. I'm gonna wrap this as tightly as I can. And now when I get to this seam, it can overlap this tape and the sublimation ink won't go through the tape. So that way I get a little bit of a cleaner seam. With these being so small, the seam is definitely gonna be noticeable, so I wanna do everything I can to make it as clean as possible. And then because these are so small, I did make the print just a little bit oversized so I would have something to pull on because it is so, so small. So I'm just going to use a piece of tape, pull as tight as possible, and tape that into place. And then the tape doesn't even have to be that long, so I'm just gonna trim that off and use this excess. And I'm gonna tape at least three places, maybe more actually. Um, so again, tape on the flap, the piece with the tape on it from before, pressing down, pulling tight, taping around. So there we go. Now the shrink wrap will hold it as well. We're just trying to get it into position and as tight as possible right now. And then we'll put that shrink wrap around it for even more assurance. So that looks pretty good. So this is the first version all taped up. So now let's look at taping the others. So I just lint rolled off my next one. And this one is the ripped edges. So it doesn't need the tape on the long side like we did before. We can just wrap it around and the print should not touch. So we should be able to grab it on one side with the tape, pull the print tight and wrap the tape around. And so you can see I have tape all the way around. Again, I'm going to do this in three places just to keep everything tight for the shrink wrap. And you can see that we will have a white area, which is what I intended, all the way down this center piece. Then again, for this version with my name that I cut all the way around, I used the same hack with the tape on the back. That way my seam will be a little cleaner. So that tape goes under the overlap and we'll just overlap again, pulling tight in the middle first, and then kind of on both, towards both ends. And there you have a taped up pen once again. And then finally the version that is torn all the way around. And for this version, I'm gonna do it the same way, except I'm gonna kind of center the print because again, I want some white on both ends. So both the top and the bottom should have a little bit of white as well as down the center where I ripped the print. So then we'll just wrap it tight. Again, three pieces of tape. And I am gonna make sure to go around the very end on both of these just so it doesn't get caught when I go to do um, my shrink wrap. So there we have our pens all taped up 
and now we're ready for shrink wrap. So I'm just opening up the shrink wrap, adding the pin to each one of these, make it about in the center, and then I'm gonna heat it up with a heat gun. And I just wanna shrink it so that everything is tight. Then we can place them in the oven. And I'm gonna place these in a 375 degree oven and I'm going to do it for about five minutes. It says four to six minutes on the instructions, so I'm gonna try five minutes. So now I'm wearing my heat resistant glove and I'm gonna turn the heat gun on. So I will turn the volume down on the video on this portion as well as speed it up. So I just did each one of these until there were no wrinkles and everything was tight on the surface of the entire pen barrel. So now let's go add these to our oven. As soon as you remove them from the oven, put them on a heat resistant mat and then try removing the shrink wrap. So this shrink wrap is sort of perforated. Um, so I'm thinking if I could get get it close to the perforation that maybe I could get it off. And these did cool very fast, like I can probably touch them already. And it's just a few minutes for me to move my camera. So these will cool very, very quickly. However, they did perforate the shrink wrap. So it's not too horrible to peel off. So we'll just peel back everything off of these and then you can peel this off and I have a gorgeous pen with a watercolor design and I actually love the way this turned out. So I chose like watercolor flowers for my pens and this one looks amazing. So I'm super excited about the rest of these. So these do not appear to be that difficult to get off even if they cool because they went ahead and perforated the wrap itself. So that is nice. So if you get it where it's perforated, it does start really easily. And I did find the shrink wrap was, and it was really, really soft, like would stick together when it came out of the oven. So I would definitely separate them in the oven if possible so they don't like melt together, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm just gonna keep peeling these off Again, with shrink wrap, the more it cools, the harder it is to get off. These aren't horrible, but definitely not super easy. So if you can remove it just as soon as it comes out of the oven, that would probably be best, but these blanks are gonna cool really quickly, so just be aware of that. So first of all, I wanna note that removing the shrink wrap from these is not easy. It did take me a long while. This was that first one I did and it's like an all over watercolor floral pattern. It had the seam and you can actually barely tell where the seam is. Um, it looks really, really good. Then this version is the watercolor pattern. However, I used that technique with the ripped seam and it has the seam ripped down one side. I actually love the idea of the ripped version. So that is probably the version I would go with. And let me show you why on these with my name. So this version did not have the ripping. So it was a full wrap. And if you can tell, there's just a little ghosting at the top of my name. And I do think that is because with a full wrap and with the barrel this small, it's hard, very, very hard to get the sublimation print tight around this barrel. However, this version where I did the ripping, so you can see the rip here, the name looks much, much better. So I do like the rip design. I do like it on the ends as well. Totally up to you whether you do that or not. I would caution you, so I kind of made a mistake. So when you lay the pen down, my name should probably be on one side or the other, and it's actually somewhere in the middle. So you would locate the name, the top of the barrel has that notch in it, and you would locate the name, so like the notch is over here, the name is 45 degrees or so from the notch. So I would definitely locate them better if I was making them over again. So watch the location with anything like this. With the all over prints, probably doesn't matter unless you care 
where this ripped, if you're doing the ripped seam, if you care where the ripped is, you might want to work on that and work on the location for that. So I do think these make an amazing gift idea. So if you add, added a name, but you could add custom text. These could be a gift for a teacher. You could put number one teacher on them. They make a great gift idea for just about anyone on your list. Plus the kit is very inexpensive. And I found that it sublimated well. So you know, sometimes those Amazon blanks, I find that I have a lot of failures with them. I did find these sublimated well. However, like I said, I was able to get the print tighter when I did the ripped seam, basically. Ripped the sublimation print and I was able to get it tighter because I was able to pull everything tighter together because there was a gap in between the print. And I do think that is why on that version with my name, I had way less ghosting. Like it looks way, way better. So I do think if you're going to add a name or have a print that is very graphic or would not lend itself to ghosting, think about the rip seam or really concentrate on pulling everything really tight. Maybe tape all the way down instead of just the three places that I did. But if you're doing like these watercolor patterns that I'm doing, you might not even be able to tell if there's ghosting anyway because it is a very pretty watercolor design. If you're doing an all over print that's very watercolory, then you probably don't have to worry as much about all the wrapping, whether you get it tight, that type of thing. You'll probably never be able to tell in the final product. And like I said, even with this watercolor print, I couldn't really tell where the seam was. I mean, if I look, I can't, could, but people aren't gonna be looking that closely at my pen. So I do think that the, those types of prints lend really well to projects like this one. So do keep that in mind when you're choosing what you're gonna put on these and know that with a more graphic print, names, words, that type of thing, you might have a little more trouble dialing everything in to get it just perfectly right. So hopefully that helps you understand how to make sublimation pens with your sublimation printer. If you like this video and it helped you, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions about anything we've covered, drop down in the comment section, ask away. And if you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos just like this one every single week and trust me, you don't wanna miss any of those. So thank y'all so much for joining me and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.